How's everyone having fun so far? Having a good time? I am having a fun time. I'm having a blast. Okay, so I'm Dark Matter, aka Mike. Uh, this presentation came to me um, about, uh, what was it, like in November. I was interacting with a friend of mine and I managed to make him angry. So that's just going to set the stage of this, what's going on here. So, um, uh, how many of you guys are familiar with what burp is? Oh, sweet. Nice. So one of the things that uh, I did last year is I uh, went out to Black Hat and went to a training course with a guy named Tim Tones, a uh, guy named Justin Searle, local guy. I don't know if you guys know Justin. He wrote an uh, open source uh, course that was called the Samurai WTF. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome course, and it also includes a distribution. Uh, that allows you to learn uh, tons about web testing. It opened my mind to a bunch of things that I hadn't previously known about. In my job, I do, um, we have an internal, uh, we have internal applications, so I do web testing on that. We have internal resources that I need to make sure that are secure, as well as external. So I mess with both of those for uh, my job professionally. And then uh, the, Samurai WTF, go check it out. It's really awesome. I give a huge shout out to Tim Tomes and to, uh, to Justin Searle who created that. It's really neat. So about me, I like computers. And also I like to do stuff like hacking. Hacking is fun. Man, this thing's all like slanty. It's making me worried about the water falling off. There we go, that works. Uh, so. I like to uh, mess around with computer security. I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, I started with Linux back in 90, 98 or 99. I was playing around with it, kind of just have always grown to it. Now I've converted to Mac. A lot of my friends make fun of me for it, but go Mac. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what else about me? Uh, yeah, nothing else pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, I, did, uh, I did a presentation at TorCon last year about some reverse engineering. So my breadth of uh, experiences from reverse engineering, uh, malware analysis, to web testing, to remote penetration, shell, uh, shell code, that type of stuff. I've, I've got quite a bit. All right, so real quick, uh, I want to give a quick disclaimer. So the things that I'm going to be talking about here can make people angry. You can break laws with it, and you can get your freedom taken away. So don't be evil. Have permission for what you do. Uh, that's really important. Um, and overall, just don't be an idiot. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I'm going to go real quick here over the key points. Um, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to go into the application. I'm going to go into kind of the scenario that happened and tell the story as it, as it unfolded, kind of repeating it so you guys can see what I did, how I uh, made the things work while using Burp and some of the other techniques that uh, I've got. Uh, so I've, hopefully it's, it's, uh, it, it works out pretty well. In my brain, it seemed to work really good. And uh, so far, the internet stayed up. So we've got a good chance of making this awesome. Also, if you guys have any questions or you want to you know, interrupt me or anything, or if, you, if you're like, no, that's BS. You're talking BS right now. You go ahead. and and uh, you know, throw it up. Because this is a learning experience for me, for all of you guys. And so I want to make it as engaging as possible for you guys. Um, so yeah, so feel free to, uh, feel free to interrupt as, as you wish. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So uh, let me give you a little quick uh, background of the tools that I've got deployed here uh, so you can understand what's going on. So first of all, I'm using Firefox as my browser. Uh, you guys, a lot of you have used Burp. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, one of the key things that Burp does is it creates a local proxy that you can redirect your browser through. So what's the advantage of creating a local proxy, you ask? I don't know, did somebody ask that? I heard it. Uh, the advantage is then that you can watch the traffic as it's going in and out of your browser. So the stuff you see on the page may not necessarily be what you're really seeing. There may be a whole bunch of other things going on behind the scenes, especially now with the dynamic web applications we have with Ajax, some of that. So uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that are going into it that's really complicated. Burp allows us to put the brakes on it. Uh, if you guys are programmers, 
This allows you to put the pause in the break, uh, put the pause in execution and get in there and see, hey, what's going on? Why is this doing this? And then Burp Suite has a number of tools that then you can repeat the behavior. So then you can go back and, and, and modify it and customize it. And it's giving you a lot lower le level access. So for starters, I'm using Firefox here. And I'm using a plugin with Firefox that is totally awesome. If you don't have it, you should go get it like today. It's called Foxy Proxy. Anybody heard of Foxy Proxy? So Foxy Proxy is really awesome in that it allows you to dynamically change your proxy that you're configured to by a click of a button. So right now, I'm using a localhost 8080 HTTP proxy. Uh, how many of you guys have ever set up an SSH SOX proxy? Anybody know about tunneling with SSH? Yeah, dude, SSH is the bomb, straight up the bomb. So if I wanted to work on, like for this test, and it, I'll give you an example of, of with my work. For my work, I was doing some testing on our website, but I didn't want to, uh, some of the guys who work on our website to know that I was testing the website. So I just launched an Amazon EC2, SSH'd into that, created a tunnel. The command's very simple, it's SSH-D. Go look it up, go read the man page, it'll enrich your life. Capital then I, what's that? Capital D. Oh, excuse me, capital D, thank you. <laughs> we're, we're in a case sensitive environment, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so then uh, you put in, you, you give it a port number. I always go 8888 because I have to do that for some reason. And then, so this, then I just click on this and I would be able to redirect my traffic through there. Um, actually, let's just do it real quick. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's do, let's do this one. You did not see this IP address. Actually, go ahead. This is a, this is a, um, a honey pot box that I've got. So go ahead and go play with it, I dare you. <laughs> nah. I would love to increase the font size. Right after. You don't know what this is. Anyways, so yeah, so SSHD that, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna come over to Firefox. I just changed my proxy with Foxy Proxy. Over here, I'm running 8888. I now have a local Sox proxy running, so I should be able to go to whatismyip.com. And right now I'm in Cedar City, Utah. And for some reason, because I assumed it, their website sucks. All right, what is my IP? Who knows a better what is my IP thing? Oh, there it is, it's right there, 6901.44. So. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are. I'm here for your technical amusement. <laughs> Dance. So as you can see right now, I'm, it, all my traffic looks like I'm coming from that IP. I've immediately, like, one command and changed it with Foxy Proxy, and now I'm completely proxied up. Uh, with an extremely powerful proxy. So put that in your toolkit. Very useful. All right. So now let's go ahead and close that. Let's get back to where we're going with this. OK. So I've reset it back to the, um, uh, to my, uh, let's see, my burp proxy. So now I've already got, it looks like we've got an item queued. I'm going to come into burp. Um, in burp, the initial state when you first open the program is that when you load a web page, it stops the traffic, it stops the communication, and it waits for you to decide what an action is. So I'm going to come in here, and it's asking me, hey, we've got this data. We've got this information, this request. What do you want us to do with it? I can forward the request. I can drop it or I can do some action with it. So in this instance, I was just going to Google. This is an entire breakdown of how the, the, pa the package is. Can you guys see that okay? 
crapola. Um, because uh, this is Java, this is a, it's a it's a Java-based program. Quick, IT. How can I increase the font size? I know screen resolution. What? It has a thing to increase it. Ah, see, right on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Oh, display. Hey, sorry guys, apologize. There we go. We could probably do 20. Does that look like it would work? Can you guys see that? Oh, that's a, uh, oh, we want to change that. Yeah, that's the one I want. I want like 24. Does that look okay? Let's try that. Good? Okay, cool. Oh, uh, when we were on the options tab, it just reminded me of another uh, thing that you can do. Um, yeah, let's go to that real quick. It's another tool in the toolkit. So how many of you guys use Tor? A couple of you? Good. Everybody you should use Tor. Tor is awesome. Tor helps us from keep safe from the NSA and all of their bad big bad wolves. <laughs> so uh, I've got Tor launched here. Uh, if any of you guys know about, about Tor, what it does is it will actually launch a SOX proxy in the background as a service. It's running on port 9150. So one of the awesome things about burp is burp itself is a proxy, but I want burp to go through a proxy. So I'm doing a proxy and proxy, but ultimately I want my traffic to look like I'm coming from somewhere else through burp. So what do I do? I go over to the options and under connections, you can come over here and you can set it to send out through your SOX proxy. So what does that mean? My traffic right now looks like I'm going through this Tor network. So this is the Tor browser. It says my IP address is currently 81.7.8.8. .8. So let's go look at, uh, I'm going to uh, turn off intercept real quick because I'm, I, I don't want it to intercept my packets anymore. So I'm just going to disable. So it's going to log the traffic and it's going to keep record of everything that's going on. But it's just not pausing the communication because I want to be able to pull this up in the web browser really fast. So now I'm going to do the what is my IP again. And we should be something. Oh, 37. So now my IPs already changed. Like I've already changed IPs since I first loaded this page up. So anyways, the point is very flexible. Burp's a really cool tool. So if you're doing uh, an audit on a system that you want to make sure that people who are doing that, that own that system don't want you to know or want to know that you were there, this is one way that you can do it. It's really helpful. However, don't do it for evil, like I said. Remember, this is good. This is pen testing. This is uh, have permission to do it. I'm, I'm supposed to be into this system, and I'm doing this audit to help them increase their security. So now, let's go back over here. Uh, we've gone to a number of websites. Uh, like, I've gone to Bing, and I had Google in there. And we've got Yahoo. But nothing's showing up. I don't have anything showing up. But the default behavior of Burp is to filter out everything, uh, filter out everything that you see here except for what's in scope. So you'll set up a target who your scope is. So today, I promised a story. So let's get into the story. So today, the target is Eventbrite. They're not specifically the target. They're more of a proxy. They're a target by proxy. So uh, you'll understand here. Uh, how many of you guys know about Eventbrite? I think it's used it to sign up for this event, right? Uh, so Eventbrite, software as a service, it will schedule events, get people to sign up. I think it can take money and stuff too. You can put special options in there, like people who have t-shirts, you can put sizes. Uh, you can create teams and stuff in it. There's a bunch of features that can do in there. So this story is that uh, in November, a friend of mine was setting up a conference. And that conference was, uh, a code conference. And for that conference, they were using Eventbrite to have everybody sign up for it. So I was going to go to the conference, or I was going to the conference, I logged into the website, and I'm like, oh, oh, it was a team competition. I apologize. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a funny team name, because I always do funny things when I put stuff in. So I'm like, uh, let's see, let's go to Eventbrite here. I think I got it up in my Chrome already. Yeah. 
So you can actually uh, go to this as well. It's uh, d4rk m 4 ttertevenbritecom And this is the event that I have scheduled for us today that we're doing. So the mock one I was talking about before. So this is what I, I came across. I, I was pulled up with a website, something like this. And I'm like, OK, that's neat. I'm going to say, I'm going to register. And I saw a list of some of the people that I know that were going um, because of the, the Facebook stuff. Oh, one other quick note here. So I'm getting uh, untrusted connection warnings. Who, anybody have any idea why? Guess? Yeah? Yeah, I'm breaking SSL right now. Why is that? <laughs> the more technical reason is, is you cannot man in the middle with the proxy that we're doing here with burp and be able to say, uh, get anything usable. It'll be garbled, garbage and trash because as it goes across burp, it's encrypted. It doesn't get to, until the end point that you use the, uh, your, your key to unlock that data. So we needed a way to be able to get burp inside of that stream. And burp doesn't have a kernel module to do it inside of like Mac OS X, and it would be way too complicated. So instead, what they do is they just give you a certificate. They're like, here, have a certificate, install it. So I've gone ahead and added the certificate. So now I have an untrusted certificate uh, that's able to decrypt the, the packets that I've got here inside of burp, but I'm still using SSL. So um, that's why I'm getting these warnings. Uh, in this case, it's fine. But if you see this on the internet, it, just in your casual browsing, be, be suspicious of why this is happening. If you don't know why this is happening, uh, look into it quite, quite deeply. Because it could be somebody's doing something that they're not supposed to be. Especially if it's like a big website. Like uh, Google just recently, they're for enforcing with Chrome, uh, they force you to go entirely to SSL. So if you try this, Chrome won't even try to load the web page. It will give you a big old error that, hey, somebody's doing something they're not supposed to. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, EFF's behind some of these pushes so that we can be safer and, and have our privacy online. So I've got this website up here now. I'm trying to register for it. So I've got first name, last name, email address, confirmation. Uh, one of the other tools, real quick, that I used is how many of you have heard of shark lasers? <laughs> Anybody? One person. All right. How many times have you signed up for crap, and then they spam you and spam you and spam you, and it annoys you, and you're just like, I just want an email address to give you to shut up, and so I can get whatever you're trying to give me. Shark Lasers gives you disposable email addresses. So this is kind of handy. All right. So I've got this temporary email address from these guys right now. I'm going to go over here and copy this. So I'm going to go back to Eventbrite. So I'm going to put in my name. Give them my email address, confirm that, and we'll go ahead and sign up with them. Uh, except for this page is all like mangled. It doesn't look right. Let's see. May have to. Let's see. See if it'll let me post it. I may have to do it outside of the of the proxy initially. All right, let's just do that. So one thing that can happen here: these guys are obviously using some uh, SSL uh, enforcing technology. So see, the website completely changed as I've now turned off my SSL. You just need to install the first. Oh, it, I thought. Oh. Oh, there you go. Sweet. All right, so I, I don't know if I can do that real quickly, but let's continue on real fast here. So the, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, try to register. So now, um, let's see. One thing we can do, um, 
this is throwing me off just a little bit. I apologize. One thing that you can do now uh, inside of the browser that's an additional tool that we can talk about is uh, have you messed around with the developer tools very much? I've got uh, under, if you go under network, this is going to show you your network transactions back and forth. Even though we're not under the proxy in that, so we're, we're going to get the same information. We're actually going to get better information. So this is way, one way you can do it outside of running your proxy, but still get access to the connection information that's going back and forth, which is what we want to get down to, is we want to get to the HTTP layer so we can see what the request that's going on. So real quick, I'm going to go back and submit, kind of call an audible real quick on this part really fast. <laughs> I'm going to register. I've got one ticket. Yeah, let's see if it'll let me do it just completely again. I think it's based on email address. Okay. New events. Okay. So one of the things that happen here is I've got down here in this list, I've got this post request that happened. So let's go copy and paste this because it's kind of crunched over here. Let me just expand this. That will help. OK, so inside of here, let's look at some of the information about this request, what happened. Is this the response? So what happened is we've got this cookie set down here, and we've got this refer of where we're going. And then we want. Let's see. For sure. Oh, there we go. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just a little bit thrown off. So OK, so what we've got here is we've got the whole breakdown of the, uh, the HTTP GET request. So this is what I'm looking for. So inside of the header, it just has some of the base information. The key, though, is down here in the request body. This is going to be the information that uh, we can use um, to re-register again and again and again. So continuing on back with the story is uh, as I was submitting and as I was going through this process, I realized uh, after submitting a few things that were silly to the, uh, to the event uh, for our team name, like uh, a whole bunch of black spaces, I found out that Everbright's obviously done a really good job at handling special characters. And so I couldn't... Uh, I, nothing was happening to, uh, or Eventbrite rather, nothing was happening to them as I was doing it. And I was getting emails responses from registering, and everything looked fine and happy. So when I had registered again with the special characters, it came, they, they handled them properly, and they were being sent to me, returned to me in the email. So like over here, I've got, hi, Mike, this order is confirmed, et cetera, et cetera. So let's give you a quick example of that. So the reason why this is important is because um, as I register these different things, uh, one of the things I did was I just put in a basic, um, I mean, nowadays, uh, how many people are familiar with, um, let me just type it in here. I don't know if you can see it. It's, um, you see that? Basically, apostrophe or one equals one. Everybody knows that, right? It's like, why, why is that something that, that's, that, that shouldn't be something that's scary anymore, right? Yes? No? Basically, that's an, uh, a way into an SQL injection. So what that does is that's going to do an escape string. That's going to allow you to say or one equals one. I guess I should put the comment afterwards. It's going to not execute the rest. So this is an extremely common SQL injection. If you're vulnerable to this, what are you doing on the internet? <laughs> like this is like the most flagrant abuse of OWASP uh, that yeah that people need to be aware of. So for this, for for one of my team names, I made my team name this, and we'll keep that in mind <laughs> for later use. Except for I did some other funny things like works one, and then you know added some other SQL goodness in there. Um, yeah, so did some, like, some inserts, some, yeah, anyways. Uh, back into, now that we've got that post request over here, let's see, 
What do I do with that one? I think I may have it right here, right? Yeah, right shirt. Okay. So now that we've got this post request, in burp, I may want to reproduce this behavior. Because, hey, that's what we do when we're web testers. We go back and we repeat, repeat, repeat. So inside of burp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of the tools it has called the repeater. I'm going to create a new one in this instance because I couldn't just use the proxy. Normally what you can do is you come into your proxy. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the, uh, let's see, just show all. OK, so these are all the transactions that I've had online uh, recently while I was using the proxy. And it gives me all the header information. Normally what I can do is I'll just right click on this and I'll just do send a repeater. And then I'm one step closer to what I'm doing. But in this instance, uh, I didn't have the, the, the certificate installed and it was breaking in so I couldn't do the post request so I couldn't hijack it. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste it. So you can literally just author your own request in here. Um, when I first started messing around with web testing and stuff a number of years ago, uh, I was just using curl. Anybody just know about curl or netcat? I've even done it just in netcat, piping stuff through netcat. So I don't, I'm not scared of just putting a bunch of text in something, but sometimes it's nice to have uh, something you can just right click and copy and move the data across. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back over here, I'm going to grab this request header and populate it, and then also the request body, put it in here at the end of it. Okay, so now, if I get hit go, let's see, specify the server. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. You have to specify, when you're doing a custom one, I apologize, I forgot. Uh, you have to specify the target up here because it's like, I don't know who you're trying to attack. I don't know what you're trying to do. Um, and so, let's see, in this instance, yeah, we'll just copy and paste it. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and set the target. And just port 80 is fine. Uh, actually, for this one, it's got to be HTTPS. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit go. And so it's going to go ahead and send this request out. So the, the main part of this request is we've got the host. We're sending it out as a user agent. We're looking like we're sending it as our browser is Mozilla. So in their, uh, eight, their logs, their web server logs, they're going to see that a web browser that was seemingly from a Mac and using Gecko and Firefox 26 came to them and asked for this data. And then, let's see, Eventbrite. So then uh, just some additional header information. And then down over here, we've got the actual data that we're passing to it. So we've got a number of uh, pieces of information inside of here. We don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what they're doing with their website. I don't have their inside docs. So, but none of this is really important except for maybe some of the things I want to mess with, which is the email address. Uh, let's see. What did I copy and paste? This it shows that I've got the email address in there. I blame Lean. He did it. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, so you can see down here I've got uh, submitted equals one is manual. So this is the information that I want to go and play with. I want to mess with. So, uh, and here's got my email address for the one at the Sharks Lasers. So for, man, changing the font seems to have made my, um, made my burp freak out. I apologize. Let's see. So now what I could do here is, I, Sent this request out. Maybe I got, let's see what's going on. Failed SSL. Okay. Let's do a quick basic one. It's not as retarded as that one's being. Let's uh, send a repeater. Go here, throw it at it. So, what we had going on here is uh, I sent the request out with this parameters and this information. And this is what I got back. So now it's like, oh, well, I want to try something down here. Uh, in the case of the story, what I did is I, um, I used the same email address. As you'll notice uh, a few minutes ago when I was registering over here, they allowed me to register multiple times with the same email address. So let's go back to the inbox here and look. And so I actually have two tickets 
for the same email address. So they're obviously allowing multiple registrations and stuff. Um, one other thing that, that uh, Eventbrite, that, that, that's problematic about the way Eventbrite's kind of set up is let's say you have a cap of how many people you want at your event, maybe 200 people, 300 people. So with that, uh, let's say I wanted to repeat this 100 times. I just maxed out the event, and I just made this event really, really obnoxious for the organizers to go through and deal with that. So uh, we'll go into that in just a little bit more here. So in this instance, I'm just going to show you, uh, I'm going to tweak this code down here a little bit just as a simulation. It's going to give me the same thing back because this isn't the actual post request for the account. But uh, over here, then I've got a new, new response. So the reason why that this is neat is we want to make tweaks to this, change our data, increment a cross. So if I was trying to do a pen test against Eventbrite, which this is in no means a pen test against Eventbrite, uh, this was just me screwing around, signing up for a conference, and pissing off my friend. Uh, but if I was actually pen testing against Eventbrite, what I would do is I would start here and be like, here's a parameter that they're accepting. Anytime that a data is getting sent to a server, then that's the, uh, uh, they have to decode that. They're going to look at that information. And then that's when they become vulnerable. It's like, what's the code doing? What's, what's going to happen? What are they doing with that information? How are they escaping it? How are they protecting themselves so that information is stored? Is it being stored in a database? Is it stored in a flat file? All those different things, as you're uh, going through and uh, messing with this, you'll be able to see what's happening to it by the responses. And most of the time, like a lot of the testing that I've done is black box testing, so I don't know what's on the inside. I, I don't, but I can make pretty good educated guesses based on the responses back, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of data in headers, and there's a lot of data in responses uh, that gives us a lot of tells of what's going on. So in the event that I was actually trying to do something here, you know, maybe I would just come here and press uh, uh, an A. It was accept, uh, expecting a number, but I just threw A in there. Let's see what happens, just on a whim. Uh, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary here, obviously, because this is just a, a very basic page that uh, it's not. This is a bad example. So <laughs> we're not getting anything different that changes. Um, one of the things that we can do here is uh, Burp has a tool now. If, if in Repeater, instead of uh, incrementing across, well, maybe I want to do A, B, C, D, whatever, and increment across all these different ones. Uh, that would take hours to do it manually. Like I've done it by hand with, uh, with some of the tools, curl and that, and it takes hours. You don't get anywhere. It's frustrating. You don't, uh, the responses are, you, know, you have to parse them every time by hand. So they have a, a tool called the Intruder. So Intruder is a really cool tool that allows you to uh, you would specify your target, and then you choose the information inside of the request. And you then can set variables on the types of attack, uh, the variables that you want to inject information into that. So I, was, uh, I compete in a Capture the Flag contests as well. Um, you guys familiar with CTFs? Yeah. So recently, uh, one of the ones that I was in, uh, as they were processing a post request, uh, they were logging uh, some of the header information that was passed to a database to create a log. You know how how benign and and um, uh, how benign does a, a developer or sysadmin think that you know just logging the header? You know how benign is that going to be? There, nothing's going to happen there. So clearly they hadn't suspected the somebody doing an injection in the header. So it's like right here, we could put in, uh, not right there, excuse me, uh, like in the cookie, for example. We come in here, we just put an injection in the cookie. So if they're processing the cookie, they're storing it in there, it could be susceptible to an injection. So that was one of the things that was kind of profound for me. As I found it in the CTF, uh, they were just doing it so that they could keep track of everybody's traffic that they were passing, how they were doing it, just to get a better picture. But they wrote it as like a very basic SQL statement when they did the insert that they just literally said fully trusted the variable of the header because it's like, who modifies a header? And so it was a really neat way that I accomplished a challenge that I didn't mean to do it. And that's not the way they intended me to do it. Uh, but I was able to get uh, additional privileges and get access to the database because of that, because uh, they were wide open with that injection. Uh, so that's one of the, the big things 
that I've learned as I've been doing this is thinking outside the box. Uh, you know, don't put stuff in where they expect you to put it. Where are they going to ex not expect you to put it in? You know, header. The other thing now is with all the different REST APIs and all the different, um, uh, like, the, the popularity now of, like, Node, uh, Node.js, you know, you can write your own web server in, like, five lines of code, and it's not really a web server. It's, it's responding to commands you send it. So one thing that's happened now is we've changed from having a huge HTTP stack and server that follows the HTTP protocol to a T, like Apache does, and now we're putting that in the hands of developers. So I'm seeing, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to see, as I've started to do some REST API uh, uh, pen tests, we're going to start seeing a return back to vulnerability because we're rebuilding things that have already been tested and secured, but now we're taking those away and not utilizing those and leveraging that. We're actually going back to a different state now and allowing people to build it. And that's, that's the worst thing that can happen is people uh, rebuilding things from scratch. So, for example, in a Node.js server, a web server, I could go in and maybe I only respond to get requests or put requests, or there's a bunch of others that are, I think there's like 11 different uh, main commands that you can give it. Maybe I'll only respond to one of those, and then the rest, I don't care about, it's benign, I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave it alone and return a 404 error if you try to request any other way. And in my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, I've, I've limited the scope of how I can be attacked, I've completely cut out get requests, I've cut out you know, uh, command injection, I've, I've cut out um, you know, be, people being able to do uh, uh, maybe like directory access because I'm not actually reading directories or anything, I'm just virtually giving them information based on their requests inside of the context of a node program. But now it's like, what did you do inside of that program for that one thing? Did you allow that access to different files and how can I leverage that and make changes to that? So I think that we're gonna see a lot of um, we're going to see a lot of new and up-and-coming attacks because of this, because uh, we're not l using some of the lessons that we've already learned, uh, because we're, we're now rebuilding some of the tools that are already out there. But in no way am I advocating, you know, let's everybody go use Apache or Tomcat or something, because I'm, uh, uh, I, I love being on the bleeding edge. I love what we've got um, as far as technology goes. I love messing with this stuff. So, you know, we're going to have growing pains either way it goes. But it's just, it's a real exciting time right now. All right, so let's jump back over here. Uh, so today, in our intruder, we have a couple different types of attacks. The types of attacks are we can do a sniper attack, we do a battering ram attack, pitchfork, and we do a cluster bomb. So the type of attack, in this instance, I've got one, two, three, four, five different variables that I've set in here. And in a sniper attack, what it's going to do uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in a sniper attack, I'm going to come over here and add a payload list. Let's say I'm just going to do a quick fuzz of, of you know, what's, uh, uh, what the vulnerable things are. So we're just going to uh, leave a simple list, and we're going to come over here, and we're going to add, we're just going to do a quick fuzz. So it's going to do some of the basics. It's going to do, uh, you know, one, uh, one quote, and, you know, some of these. If, if you're vulnerable to anything that's, like, in the default settings in burp, um, yeah, you need to rethink development. <laughs> uh, and definitely get familiar with the OWASP top 10. Um, so yeah, this, so this will do just the basics. And it will tell us how many request counts we're going to have here. So in this instance, I've got uh, like a list of maybe 10 items. And we've got a total of 45 total requests. Uh, so we've got 45 uh, total requests. So basically what it's going to do is in the sniper attack, it's going to try every one of those combinations in your list against every one of these variables. So it's going to be completely automated. Uh, and it's going to test systematically from this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, uh, with each of the items that are in this list. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a start. I don't want to piss off Eventbrite too much, because uh, if I let this run and go crazy, that will definitely come kill me. But uh, I'm just going to run one to give you an idea. Oh, wait, that wasn't even against Eventbrite. That was a custom script that I had that may not work. I don't have that server running. One second. Let's see. Let's come back over here to my web history. Why don't we just, uh, we'll, we'll do shark lasers. Those guys are probably pretty cool. 
let me um, let me just uh, do one thing real quick. I'm going to turn my proxy back on, and I'm going to refresh this page, and I'm just going to request a new identification. Uh, let's see. So now over in here, when I look, I should have a post request from these guys. So they're setting a new email user. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick uh, test against this. So I'm going to add this to the uh, intruder, inside of intruder. Uh, I'm going to look at the different positions. By default, one of the cool things it does is it'll sit there and find all of the items that you probably should test. Um, and it will give you, it will set them up. So I mean, this, this program is really powerful. It could be really dangerous. Um, in the wrong hands because this is this is a script kitty craziness right here. They could just like one click and load a payload and start running with it. Um, I'm going to clear all these. I'm just going to do I'm going to do this variable up here. So I just highlight and then I just click add and then we come over here and maybe I just want to try the. You don't want to do host. Uh, host would be a bad idea because. If you change the host that it's posting against, it's, it, you're not posting against where you were. So it's completely pointless. Uh, but the user agent, maybe there's something in the user agent. So let's add that. Maybe I only want to do a subset of the user agent like this. I want it to show Mozilla, but then I don't want to show Mac. So I'm actually going to use that as an injectable point. So over here, back, reload my payload. payload. Just do a quick fuzz list. And then. Um, uh, now, I mean, it's going to run 18 times, so it's going to run uh, 9 here and 9 in that of this list. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that out real fast. So it already finished. I already ran all that against their website. So it first creates a baseline of what a, a, a request looks like without any modification. And then you can see the length. So this is one of the most powerful tools in this program. As it's making all these requests, uh, as we're making all these requests, uh, we can see which ones have different byte lengths, and we'll be able to quickly figure out what's, uh, what's working and what's not. You can actually create rules of the responses and say if it responds with, like maybe you're trying to get through a password protected website. In the password protected website, uh, as soon as you log in and it says hello user, hello common than the user you logged in with, you could set up a rule in here and say, OK, if my response says you know, the HTML tags for hello, then you would know that's a success. And so you can, you can not have to look through this list at all. So it's very useful to determine whether your attack was successful or not. Um, on this as well, uh, let's see. So this, this was just an uh, AJAX call. So it responded with some JSON down here. Uh, and it looks like everything went OK on the baseline. Well, let's see what happened when it made some changes and checked. They just don't respond with anything. They're not responding with any data. I gave it some a re bad reading, and it's like, we're not giving you any data back. So they probably just have a very basic setup that says, if somebody's doing something unexpected, just we're not giving them any, anything back. So again, no response back. But then down here, I got started getting something again when I was using this, right? And it was just. Again, the same data, because this is, a, this is um, not an actual test I went into. Um, ultimately, what this shows is that the variables that I was using to test this with are probably not susceptible to the items in my payload list. All right. Uh, let's see. Quickly, I'm going to kind of summarize some of the other tools that are in here that are really awesome. Uh, one of the things that I did uh, while I was creating um, those accounts with the, uh, with the event that I was going to is uh, I want to do, um, hello, my name is awesome. And this is called the decoder. The decoder is amazing. So inside the decoder, you come over here and you choose uh, whether you want to encode or decode. So this right now is in ASCII text, and we want to encode it. So I'm going to go ahead and encode it as a URL. So now. This is now URL text, the equivalent of what that is. OK, so what's the advantage of URL text? As you put it in a URL, it will auto decode back to this. Well, why is that important? Because you can encode in certain ways. And if someone's written their code to decode URL code, you can actually throw injections in here. But maybe they're like, OK, I don't want an apostrophe. We're going to throw out all apostrophes if people pass apostrophes. But if you URL encode apostrophe and send it to them, they may decode it for you, and then in, and it allows you to get an injection. So it's just uh, it's, it's a really neat way to um, 
It's a neat way to get into your attack uh, and find places, again, outside the box. So, so what I did in the, uh, for one of the submissions I did that I actually caused some trouble in um, was I did this and one equals one. And then I did like select or uh, insert, uh, what did I do? I did like insert something into admin, basically. Uh, I, I tried to insert a user into admin. Uh, but I was doing this as a team name, just completely like, just blind. I didn't know what was going on. So I then, then uh, URL encoded it and then submitted it as my team name. But then it looked way more cool when I gzipped encoded it. <laughs> so this is what it would look like as gzipped, if you guys can see it. But it's, it's binary and craziness. Eventbrite can handle it. Eventbrite's pretty good at handling that. Uh, so I submitted that. Basically what happened with the rest of this story is I was able to SQL inject my friends because what he was doing is when he got an email through Eventbrite saying people had signed up, he was actually scraping that data, plugging it, pulling it down into a local database to start building a user list of who was going to be there. Uh, was going to then, um, so they could create the list for the event and stuff. I inadvertently, because he was scraping that, he grabbed the data out of here and it created an injection across uh, Eventbrite was like a beautiful bridge because they handled it beautifully and didn't like escape any of my characters and turn around and handed him clean injection code and all that because it's like <laughs> they know how to handle crap, but he didn't because he just wrote a quick and dirty script to, that would parse email and so he could just have a local copy of the stuff that he did. Uh, and so basically the moral of the story is, is um, I created about uh, 10 users uh, and uh, first, what happened, he didn't know it was me, which is crazy because I used my email address and I used my personal information to sign up like the first time, and then I continued to use my same email address because they let you register multiple signs with the same email address. And then like, he starts replying to me, who is this and what are you doing? Because he didn't recognize that particular personal email address I had. And he's like, why are you trying to hack me? And I'm like, I'm not trying to hack you, I'm just submitting funny team names. And I'm like, why is there a problem? And he emails me back and he's like, uh, well, we don't want hackers like you at this event. You know, this is ridiculous. And he, like, I got this crazy email. He's all really pissed off. Um, so then I called my, another friend of mine who's a mutual friend and was like, hey, listen, this guy is going crazy. I don't think he realizes this is me and I don't know what's going on. Like, I had no idea there was an SQL, like my injection had messed with his stuff and broke like all of his reports. Um, <laughs> So, like, yeah, it was bad. So I called my buddy to try to smooth it over because I'm like, through email, he's just, he's like, don't come, you're not invited, and you're an evil hacker, and you suck. And um, <laughs> uh, so my friend gets a hold of him, and, uh, you know, I'm like, listen, I was not trying to do an injection because if I was trying to be malicious, man, what I would do is I would have taken it to the intruder, I would have permutated across some lists, and I would have filled out, because he had a cap of 200 people on the event, I would have like maxed out the 200 people. I would have like messed with a ton of things. I, I, yeah, I was not doing this maliciously. I was simply trying to be funny, because it's a code event. It's like a con here. It's like signing up for this, I would do something funny. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, at Saint Con, I don't know if you guys went to Saint Con or not, you know, I mess around and put funny stuff in there. I had like a, a, a bunch of blacks that look like it, uh, black boxes that make it look like it's redacted. Um, I, I don't know, I like to do that. I think a little bit outside of the box. And I think that that's okay, but a lot of people I realize don't. It's like, don't use my, my web application how you want to, use it how I want you to use it. I think that's kind of the mentality of a lot of programmers. Uh, they don't think that, oh, someone may just like, there's 200 characters available, I'm going to use all 200 characters, you know? It's a, people don't think about that. It's like, no, you're going to use your name that's eight characters or 10 characters. So I think that one of the things I really um, want to impress with you guys is that, you know, think outside the box as you're, uh, if you're building things or as you're testing, and, and then, you know, don't immediately assume that because somebody's doing something that you haven't seen before, that that's, that's, that's hacking. Like, I, it was basic SQL injection code. It's like, that's a joke on XKCD about Bobby Tables. It's like, literally, in this day and age, if you're vulnerable to that, then you deserve what you get. 
So moral of the story is I helped write a bunch of SQL code uh, for him to help clean up his crap and remove all the records that I created. I ended up going to the event and helped organize and get it going. And we're now buddy buddies again. So, but um, the, you know, the main thing here, the main takeaway is, is be careful with the tools you have because uh, sometimes you think you're doing something funny or that and, and you don't think it's harassing or whatnot. It, it's, I, I got nervous for a minute. Like I thought that he was going to be like, I'm reporting you to the FBI and you know, this, is, this is out of control, which would be just asinine for what it was. So I guess I was being a little bit retarded with great power, so the whole thing, great power, great responsibility. So uh, like I said, more of the story. Make sure you have permission, make sure you're doing it, because I didn't have express permission to do this. Uh, there was, you know, but, you know, in the same context, signing up for an event, you know, there's, there's a little leniency there that I would, I would hope that I was going to be given. Um, so, yeah, with that, uh, um, thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate your time. I'm out of time now. Um, I maybe can answer, ask a few questions for a minute. One minute. Yeah. Sweet. I've just been giving control over your time. Uh, any questions? All right. Oh, there we go. This one is the paid one. I use the professional version. But so Burp's a really awesome company. I met the guys a while back, and um, their model is. Don't uh, limit features. Like they give you the full access to the program out of the gate. They don't limit any of the features you get access to. What they limit you on is your request per second you can do. So it's a really cool model. So if you're going to use their free version, you can't. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do a, like I've I've done. You know, hundreds of thousands of requests in a few minutes. You know, half hour. I wouldn't have been able to do that with the free version. I would have maybe got away with like 500 in that same time. So they use a throttling mechanism for their licensing scheme. Uh, so yeah, definitely go download it, test it out. Uh, it's really neat. Any other questions? Cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close my laptop. And uh, thanks, you guys, for listening to me.